Will you go with me in prayer? Almighty God, loving, protecting God, we come to you today, this day, the first day of the rest of our lives. And we come together today to worship and praise you and to thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. We ask, dear God, that you would allow us to feel your spirit in this place. We ask that you would open our hearts, open our minds, and be receptive to the words that you have for us today. We ask that you would allow Sister Leah to hear what you have to say. And she would give us the words that we need to hear. We ask that you would bless those that are present, those who are not here for whatever reason it may be. Guide us, O oh God. Give us wisdom, give us discernment. And once you've done that, that you would give us the courage and the strength to act upon the wisdom and discernment you've given us. We ask that you would bless us, dear God, and bless us in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to welcome you all to worship here this morning at St. John's MCC. If this is your first time with us this morning, I want to say a special welcome and greeting to you. Hope you got a copy of our welcome information guide. Get some more information about who we are here at St. John's and um, also a copy of our blue welcome card. Please hold on to your blue welcome card and meet with our deacons over in the corner here to my left. They have a special gift for you just to say welcome to worship this morning. Just a few quick announcements. I want to thank everybody for last weekend, our 40th anniversary. I think we had a pretty good time. I think our founders were very proud of the work that we've done here in Raleigh over the past 40 years. Also, just a couple of other um, service announcements, in case you don't know, on Tuesday nights we do have a Bible study here at St. John's at 6.30, and their uh, focus right now is the Gospel of John, looking back 40 years over the, um, the Gospel of John. As many of you know, St. John's was, was founded around that particular book of the Bible. So they'll be taking a, a closer look at that. And then on Wednesday nights, we have a midweek service here at 7 o'clock, led by our, our deacon Vance. And you do not want to miss this coming Wednesday night because his sermon title is Squirrel on the Loose. So you don't want to miss that. And um, like I told the, the group this morning, Vance sends me music every week, and I never know what to expect. So in addition to the sermon, come out to see what's on the playlist also. And I think that is it for announcements this morning. So I should rise as you're able. Rise as you're able. Find someone you don't know and say welcome to the service this morning. It's Solomon Sweet.
the sweet, call in the sweet, sweet fragrance of your presence, Lord. It's all in the worship, be thy glorified. It's all in the sweet, sweet fragrance of your presence, Lord. It's all in the worship, be thy glorified. It gets in my hands, it gets in my hands as I lift them in your presence, Lord. It's all in the worship, be thy glorified.
do that with no music. Yes, I do. morning. I thank you for saying, Charles, I got something for you to do. Don't worry about what you say. Don't worry about what you feel. You just show up. I'll, I'll do the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Holy One, we first and foremost and always give you thanks and praise. when we faithfully call you come you show up and you show out and you fill this place with your spirit your mercy and your grace and we thank you this could be an empty building this could just be a shell where people gathered once <sighs> But it's not. See, we can truly say this is the house of the Lord. And it's not because of what I say and it's not because of what anyone else does. It's just the fact that you show up. And we thank you for that. We thank you for holding us and carrying us another week. We thank you in a world of chaos and craziness and confusion that you have been there with us. You've stirred us. You've helped us. When we've fallen, you've picked us up. When we've cried, you've dried our tears. So we thank you for all the goings on this week, the protesting for life matters. 
see, the bad thing is that we have to say that. We have to say that black life matters. We have to say that while well, young men are being accosted and arrested and shot in the streets, we have to say that. We have to say there's an injustice against us. There's an injustice against women. There's an injustice against people. It's sad that we have to say that. And it's sad. But the assurance, the blessed assurance, is that when we call on you and we ask you for your mercy and your grace and we ask you for your help and we ask you for your strength, you do it only the way that you can do it. Your will be done. So we stand on that assurance this morning. That with all the crazy going on and even the fact that we have an election going on and we have someone who wants to be a leader of this nation that has the audacity has the audacity to even go against your law. Your law that says that we should love you with all our heart, minds, and soul. And the second is like unto it, that we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. On these two laws rest all others. And they have the audacity to say they hate somebody. Oh, Father God. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. But that's all right. See, we know we call on you, we call on your will, we call on Jesus to fix it for us. But not just fix it for us. Give us the strength and the courage we need to step out and do something ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for our sister Leah who's coming up to speak and give your word. We ask that you move her aside. You shine through her. You pour into her the message that you would have her give to us this morning. And Lord, I can go ahead and dare say that if we just listen, if we keep our ears, our minds, and our hearts open, there's no way that we won't be able to hear the word from you. We thank you. Be with us. Love us unconditionally as you always do. And in through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 
verse 16 to 21, and I'll be reading from the message. I'll let Leah share that with you. (laughs) Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. We looked at the Messiah that way once and got it all wrong. As you know. We certainly didn't look at him. We certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start. Is created new. The old life is gone. A new life burgess. Look at it. All this comes from the God who settled the relationship between us and God and then called us to settle our relationship with each other. God put the world square with God's self through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sin God has given us the task of telling everyone what God is doing. We're crisis representatives. God uses us to clear men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work and making things right between them. We're speaking for God, we're speaking for Christ himself now. Become friends with God. God, already a friend, is already a friend with you. How, you say? In Christ, God put the wrong on him who never did anything wrong so that we could be put right with God. doing 
I've been tearing up a bit. That, that was good. That was good stuff. I think that kind of stuff brings us into where we need to be, right? We get a little, we get in the presence of what God really wants to do with us. And um, I just want to thank Deacon Charles because um, I picked three scriptures out of the lectionary, and they were all kind of lengthy. And he came in this morning thinking he was going to have to read all of that. Um, But God is good. He is. And gave him a bit of relief, right? All right. So today I want to talk to you guys about the beauty and the breakdown. So we're we're in Lenten season. So y'all were supposed to have given something up, committed to do something different, right? But during this period, we're all craving because we're hungry, right? Or we're, we're constantly thinking about the thing that we're supposed to give up or what we're supposed to do, right? And so today I want to talk to you guys about the beauty and the breakdown. Because maybe through the breakdown, it's maybe not a bad thing, but this could actually be a pretty good thing, okay? So let's pray. A little bit, not as long as Deacon Charles, but just we're going to briefly, we're going to briefly pray. I just, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your people. I thank you for grace. I thank you for grace that you bestow on our people every day. And sometimes they're not even aware that they're living in that grace. Lord, I just want you to move me out of the way because I feel like I got things to say to these people, but your word and what you need to say is more important today. Your agenda, Lord, (laughs) not mine. We love you and we thank you. Amen. All right, I'm going to start off with Joshua, uh, chapter 5. Verses 9 through 12, okay? Oh, wait, I, I got to give you my confession. My confession is I've been in church my whole life, all 25 years. I have been in church. Yeah. <laughs> I have been in church my whole life. And um, I ha- I've been aware of the lectionary, and usually a pastor will, on your day, on the Sunday, they pick one verse out of the lectionary, and they tether that out. And then, because I grew up Baptist and then half Pentecostal, then that one verse is like two hours long, right? That's not going to be me today, I promise. <laughs> But I couldn't decide when I looked at the lectionary. So I'm going to kind of dibble and dabble between three three different verses, okay? So just bear with me today, okay? Our first scripture reading is taken from Joshua chapter 5, verses 9 9 through 12. And I'm reading from the message. Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt. That's why the place is called the Galal. It's still called that. The people of Israel continued to camp at the Galal. They celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th day of the month on the plains of Jericho. Right away, the day after Passover, they started eating the produce of that country, unraised bread and roasted grain, and then no more manna. The manna stopped. As soon as they started food, grown in the land, there was no more manna for the people of Israel. That year, they ate the crops of Canaan. Okay, so people read the the Old Testament, and they're like, what are they talking about? What's going on? Right? So there's like a little clueless look, like why is she reading this verse? Well, it's very significant. Think about it. The Israelites had been traveling for about 40 years. Now, they weren't just traveling, like, walking with some nice shoes on, right, little backpack gear. No, 
they were traveling with like their pots, their pans, their whole life. Can you imagine traveling for 40 years? And now look, you would camp one place for a few days and then oh, have to keep moving, right? So can you imagine how much stress that would be? Now, all the while, you know, they parted the Red Sea, like they went through the Red Sea, right? They did all that with all their crap, right? Then on top of that, family, some people in the family, as you know how our families can get, some people in the family are like, oh, why are we doing this? And we just need to go back, right? So they had to deal with that. So they're dealing with that stress. And then they're going into foreign lands. Now, back then, people were very territorial. So they had to fight along the way. I had to fight with all my crap with me for 40 years of this. And the biggest thing, the biggest insult is that they had to eat manna for 40 years. Now, when I was a little girl, I thought manna, because we learned that manna came from heaven, right? I thought manna was like mashed potatoes, steak, <laughs> rolls. I thought all of this stuff was coming out of heaven. But I did, I did some research, and what I found out is that manna is an excrement that comes off of a tamarack tree. It's a sticky substance, gummy. Can you imagine eating that for 40 years? Sounds kind of gross. So what happens, this text talks about the refreshing, the beginning of a new season. So they finally heard, they've been hearing for 40 years about this promised land, the land of milk and honey. And then what happens is that God tells them, hey, this is it, this promised land. So they have to do two things. They have to get the place clean and get their, their peoples clean, so the males had to be circumcised. And then they had to have a first crop. They had to eat a first crop from the promised land. So up until this point, all the food they knew was manna. And then God said, stop. So God kind of carried them this whole way, gave them provisions. But then when they could provide for themselves, then he said, look, here are the crops. Here you go. You're good. You can stand on your own two feet. So they were able to sow in obedience because they've been eating manna this whole time. They didn't know if food was going to grow or whatever, right? They sowed in obedience, and what they reaped was a refreshing. A refreshing, and so they were able to really experience God's grace in that moment. Manna stopped, and I was able to produce fruit because I had faith in that, right? So that's Old Testament. That's a little bit hard to grasp sometimes, the Old Testament. But I'm going to bring you all back to the New Testament. Circa yesterday, around 3 o'clock. You ready? Yesterday, 3 o'clock. So um, the tornadoes came, and we had, we have a whole bunch of trees in our yard, a whole bunch of them. So in the joys of home ownership, we actually have to do yard work. Yes, lipstick Leah. I got out there with my gloves and my tights and my tennis shoes, and I was picking up sticks. I was picking them up. And when you looked at my yard, our yard, our yard, <laughs> when I looked at the yard, there were sticks and branches and limbs everywhere. And, you know, just if I looked at my yard, I would have thought, these trees are dead. We don't have any more trees, right? But when I looked up, I saw these trees. And though they were, some of them were bare, they were budding. 
and new branches were growing. He was refreshing those trees. So I think in our lives sometimes we have a lot of limbs that fall down. And we just think, you know what, I am dead. But when I look at my tree, when I look at who I am in Christ, when I say yes to him, he just refreshes me in a way that I can't even explain it. The trees don't worry about it. They go through the seasonal change. That is it. And so that leads me to 2 Corinthians. What is old has passed away. I am new in Christ. He refreshes me every day. And as I picked up those things, get my little exercise on, right? I just had to thank God. Because the dead things I needed to have gone. Those trees cannot survive with the dead limbs. It would eat them away. They, ha- they need that, right? They need, they need to be shaped down so that they can survive. Those are the things that happen with us. We have natural disasters that happen, right, that really pull us down. But God knows something about the journey that we don't know. And so when I'm faithful... And when I'm obedient to his word, he refreshes me. So I look forward to that refreshing. Now, I'm sure it's painful when things break, when people move away, when things are not there. But there's something in the pain that makes me hopeful. That what God has in for my journey is something that I can't even imagine or fathom. All right, so I gave you New Testament stuff. That was new. I'm going to switch back when we go to the Old Testament and talk about the prodigal son. Y'all remember that story? All right, so I'm about to paraphrase it. Lord. (laughs) I hope hope he doesn't get me later. Okay. Okay. Here's the paraphrase. This is the Leah, not the message. Okay. The paraphrase is, okay, there's this dad. He has two kids. One is probably more responsible. The other kid, not so much. But being a good dad and making provisions, he says, I'm going to split up my fortune. You're going to get some, oldest son. Youngest son's going to get some. All right, cool. Older son, responsible, says, I'm going to help my father. We're going to toil this land. I'm going to be right by him. I'm going to help the family. Right? Second son says, Woohoo! I got it. I'm paid. Let's go. I'm paid. Let's go. Let's do it. And that's what happened. He goes out and he does it. He does a little bit of everything. Right? He spends his money. He does what he needs. He goes wild right? Then gets to a point, there's no more money. There's no more prostitutes because there is no more money. And he has to humble himself and go home. I can imagine that this was pretty hard for him, you know, to go home after he said, peace, dad, I'm out. Peace, brother, right? But he does. He humbles himself. He comes home. And the older brother's like, oh, mm, 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 mm. no, dad, we cannot let him back. He squandered your money. Mm, mm, no. But the dad says, you know, when he was out in those streets, he was dead. He really was. He didn't, he didn't know anything about anything. But, you know, he had the presence of mind to come home. He humbled himself, and he came home. So he was able to still reap the benefits of the work that his dad did. (laughs) I think that sometimes when we get into church, we think that, you know, we're in church, everything's going great, and then we're never supposed to leave church. 
I grew up in the church. I have left several times. <laughs> but I always come back. Because there's something about church. There's something about the refreshing. There's something about something where I can come somewhere to revitalize my soul the way that no one else can. That's what the prodigal son is about. Home is about where I can come and be naked and just be me and just say, I'm sorry. I was, I was wild. <laughs> I was crazy. I did things I probably shouldn't have done. But, you know, if I hadn't have done those things, I wouldn't have had any kind of experience to, to, to compare it with. I would always think that being wild is okay, right? And crazy is okay. But when I come home, when I come back to Jesus, when I come back to Christ, I realize that I can always be refreshed. No matter what I do, yes, grace. No matter what I do, no matter the hurts that I've caused or the hurts that have been caused to me, I can come home and be refreshed. So if we think about everything I've kind of said today, we talked about the Israelites, right? And they traveled somewhere for 40 years and still held on and still had faith and still struggled. And I can believe that when they got to the promised land, the amount of relief they felt that they would not have to care. I could not carry my pots and pans for 40 years everywhere I went, right? To be able to have that, they were humbled and grateful, and they had a new kind of respect for who God was to them. And so every time I go through something, every time I'm in any type of valley, when I come out of that valley, all I can say is, Thank you, because that's grace. That's I can go away and come back and be refreshed because he loves me. Because at the end of the day, when I say yes, and I only need to say yes once. When I say yes, it's enough. And it, and it lasts my lifetime. It's only one yes. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. God got me. Seriously, like I had to sit down because I was like, oh. So I'm just not going to do half of my sermon. Yeah, thanks, God. But we just talked about the beauty of the breakdown, right? And, and the breakdown can happen at any point. And the breakdown doesn't have to be bad. The breakdown is good. I think at 9 o'clock I talked about fruit and vegetables, right? That a tomato is just great by itself, right? But when I chop that thing up, fry it up, season it up, marinate it, sauce it up, that's a new tomato. The tomato is still the same, but I seasoned it up and got it all jacked up, right? That's what God does to us. When we say yes, he seasons us up, he jacks us up, shapes us up, loves us up, and he makes us more useful than we were before. All right. <laughs> Here's the water. There's really nothing special about it. But it is an outward sign of an inward experience. This is the yes. This is the beauty of the breakdown. If I recognize that some things in my life are changing and I want to say yes so that God can guide my journey, just come up and sprinkle a water. No one has to do any special prayer. It's just a yes. And I think what we're going to, huh? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. We'll make sure we get it in the bowl, <laughs> the water. <laughs> we'll make sure the water goes in the bowl. Okay, we got that in the bowl. 
And if you don't need sprinkling of water, if you just need prayer, I'm, I'm going to have some prayer warriors come up. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to have prayer warriors come up and pray that, pray that thing that you need to be broken down or that yes that you need to have answered. All right. Good afternoon. It's that time of the service to give back to God what he has so generously given to us. We have two offerings today. Our first offering will be to our general fund here to keep the ministry at St. John's going. And I just want to bring it to your attention. In the Sunday news, you'll notice down at the bottom, there is the budget information. Now, normally, we may meet that budget one time per month. So I'm asking that we step up uh, with our tithes and offerings, and that way we don't have to use our saved funds. The second offering is for our Change for Change, and that offering is going to the outreach, I mean, out Raleigh um, expenses when that comes up. So please be generous. Give from your heart. Thank you. Gracious and loving God, we thank you once again for this opportunity to give during this portion of our service in this form of our worship. We ask God that as we have given, we, that you'll take this tithe and offering, use it to continue the work that you started in and through this community of faith, Use it to continue to spread your message of love and of peace. In Christ's name, amen. My brothers and sisters, as we gather once more around this table, I want to remind you that in Metropolitan Community Churches, we affirm, celebrate, and offer an open communion. For this table represents the fullness of God's unconditional love as demonstrated through the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of the Christ. So today we invite you to come just as you are to share at God's table being nourished by the bread of life and the cup of salvation. This table is prepared. This table is open for you. On the night that he was to be handed over to suffering and death, Jesus, during the meal, surrounded by his friends, took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them and said, Take, eat this, all of you. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he took a cup of the fruit of the vine. And after giving thanks, he passed it among them and said, Take, drink this, all of you. This is a cup of a new and everlasting covenant, which is sealed in my blood, which is shed for you and for the world for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Loving God, we ask once more for you to pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. By your presence, make sacred this feast that they may become for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us proclaim again the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ is here, Christ will come again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. You're invited as the ushers direct to receive the gifts of bread and fruit of the vine from one of the communion servers followed by our prayer of blessing. If you'd like to receive communion without a prayer of blessing, please approach your communion server with your arms crossed across your torso. We request that you observe the sacredness of this time as others receive the Holy Eucharist through song, prayer, and meditation. Let us all come together. Let us celebrate the feast.
God of grace, we give you thanks once more for this holy mystery you have provided for us through the fruit of the vine and the wheat of the field. Thank you for renewing us at your table by the presence of the Christ. Thank you for the bread of life that sustains all creation. As we prepare to leave this place, may your love continue to surround us and inspire us to live more fully for you, that we might rejoice as your servants to the world. This we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. would like for you to remember as you leave this place today that sometimes we... <coughs> Sometimes we receive things that, you know, we, that it's good for us, but we don't treasure it, and sometimes then we lose it. And then there are times when we have to remember that, you know, you can't live in the past. You have to look forward. Not saying that the past is not important because we learn from the past. But we can't keep looking in the rearview mirror and expect to get somewhere else. And remember, we all make mistakes. And it is a blessing when we really learn and really become aware that we've made a mistake. And we go home and go back and we are greeted and forgiven. And out of that, remember, it is not you, only you who make mistakes. Other people make mistakes also. And you too have to forgive them. So when you leave here, go out and look at everyone as a blessing and be a blessing. Go in peace. Come on, put your hands together. How many know you're going to make it with Christ? You, you can make it without Christ in your life. You, you can make it without Christ in your life. Why waste your time going lower and lower when there is one who will carry you over? You, you can make it without Christ. You, you can make it without Christ in your life. You, you can make it without Christ in your life. Why waste your time going lower? If this is your first time here, I ask that you please come over in this corner. We have a gift for you. If this is your first time, your first time visitor, we have a gift for you. So we would like for you to come over to this circle.